Hey everyone, this is Nemesis, and I have a review for you after a month or so. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Just, I didn't buy any new figures for that long. Uh, but yeah, this is the Transformers Masterpiece Movie Series MPM 05 Barricade. Um, the Decepticon police car from the first movie. You can see, yeah, it's a police car and everything. And of course, we'll quickly the box. It's a pretty typical MPM box. You know, you got the figure in both modes, Car Tommy and Hasbro logos. This is the Hasbro version, by the way. You see all that Ford Ford branding, all that stuff. Trying to transform his masterpiece, and apparently dust. Uh, copyrights and a little QR code for pointing a Ford or something, a barcode. Uh, authentic Transformers as well. Uh, a shot of the car mode, shot of the robot mode, and car mode. And on the back, you have more shots plus more uh, licensing and whatnot. And oh, hey, the weapon. So there's the. box real quick and of course he also comes with instructions fairly large um because of the colors though some of it is a little difficult to uh ascertain what the heck you're supposed to do just because of the dark grays and purples kind of sometimes blend together and you're like wait where is this supposed to move so yeah it, it it would be better if there was um i don't know slightly different coloring on the instructions but what we have here though is of course the police um saline mustang from the first movie, Barricade. And yeah, it, it looks it looks pretty good, I, I'll, I'll say. Uh, this is, again, this is the Hasbro version. Um, as far as I know, there are no real differences between the two versions, or at least nothing notable, as far as I can tell. I don't remember if there's anything found, but that's all I know. Uh, yeah, it's got, you know, it says police, 643, to punish and enslave again, uh, 911. It rolls pretty well, even though there's really, really very little clearance. If you can see that, you can see there's very little clearance underneath, including back here, particularly. But it does roll. Rolls pretty well. It's got a little, um, little um, guard there and everything. Got the police lights. Nicely picked out tail lights. Got the Oklahoma plate. Even says saline right there on the back bumper. Even the, the exhaust pipes are picked out in the paint, which is nice. You know, the headlights and everything. Everything's really nicely done. You can kind of see through. I mean, because they decided on clear windows. You can see through everything. You can see underneath uh, robot mode stuff. But, eh, not a huge deal to me. But yeah, it's a nice, solid um, car, in my opinion. It's nice and solid. It rolls and everything. It looks really good. And the only thing I guess you can say is really the seam line there. But that's kind of the uh, results of having a Transformer. So I do like this. I do like it a lot. It's nice and hefty and everything too. So I like it. I like it quite a bit in this mode. This is a really nice alt mode. Uh, I don't see any real problems like that. Maybe mine doesn't totally tab in totally back here. You can kind of see the gap, but it's such a small gap. I don't really care that much. So transformation though. Transformation is actually fairly simple. All things are considered as a masterpiece. Uh, I think the most difficult part is just kind of getting everything initially pulled apart here because you got to... You get started off with like getting the side these side pieces untabbed and there's like a billion tabs back here so you have to like kind of massage everything and there's a good chance and that's actually probably a good idea just lift this up out of the way this helps get some of the stuff untabbed but yeah I want to do this on both sides untab it like and lift the lift these windows out of the way or if you can but you have to untab everything also up here you want to take the sides of the hood and split them out like that See, then that starts untabbing everything. Then you can pull the whole side out as so everything doesn't get caught. This is where you also want to go ahead and move these windows out of the way like that so you can get the hands out. And that, well, that gets all that stuff clear. I'm going to go ahead and adjust the camera just a little bit. I must also apologize. I'm a little rushed again. It's been a month since I've done any review. So, yeah, it's been a while. So, yeah, it, that's okay. All that stuff's cleared out. So from there, you want to take these, okay, each arm, you want to take the wheel here, move it out, and there's a little slider. It's on this little slider. You want to move it, slide it down, and then tab it in back here. There's a little slot right there where this, this tab will go in. Clip it into place. Then you want to take this arm, or this hand, I should say, move it down here, and then right here, twist it around, there's little tabs on the back. You see those tabs? Those go into the between the spokes and the wheel. You gotta line it up, which can be a little bit of anno annoyance, just trying to get all that lined up. Eventually you'll figure it out. 
supposedly anyway. <laughs> yeah, line it up and tab the hand in, adjust the hand. And then up here, you wanna take this blue thing, open it up from the rear window like that and then close this up like that into the arm. Take the door, kind of split it off like this and it's on a little hinge and a swivel. See that, you wanna take that and swivel around down like this. Take this whole arm piece and move it up. There's multiple tabs and slots up here which will complete the shoulder. Tab it all in securely, and there you go, that's one arm done. Do all the same stuff on this side. Open the wheel, slide it down, tab it in place. Take the hand, move it forward, twist it around, tab it into the wheel. If it wants to tab in, again, you have to line it up properly, which can be a bit of a pain Again, doesn't always want to tab in. There we go. Tab it in. Take this blue piece. Move it up. Collapse the rear window into the arm. Take this door. Turn it and spin it around. And then collapse the whole thing up into the shoulder. And that's the other arm done. Then up here, if it hasn't already, up here you want to split this right there. It splits it off. Go up here, it'll kind of click into place, and then you take this front part and move it down like that. Same on this side. Unpeg it, move it up, and move that part down. And that is pretty much the arms done. You also want to make sure they're straightened out like that. And up here, you want to take this uh, front piece and move it down. That will also force these bumper pieces to uh, open in. Well, since I just did it anyway, untab the hood. And that will open this up. And then you want to take this whole this, the hood, roof, and windshield, move them up like that, get them all the way. And you want to take this front section right here, this whole front section kind of moves out and down. You want to move it down. Make sure this thing is collapsed all the way down, this gray piece. And that goes in here, in this little hole right there. You see that hole? Yeah. Move it in there. And it'll click into place. Move the head up, and also move this piece up as well. That'll become all that stuff. And take these window pieces, these window pieces right here. When moving so the gray part is up here, you also take the arms. There's a little another little armature right there. You can see that on this rivet. Move that forward so it's even with that, and also adjust the shoulders. So move it forward like that. And that's, you can see the bottom, upper half starting to form. Then back here, and well, let's see, the black and stuff. There's a little tab right here where my finger is. There's a tab right there that goes in that little slot right there. Whilst you're doing this, you also want to take the roof and uh, move it up like this. And I'll take this other armature and move it up. Collapse it all in like that. And this whole thing right here, this back, you want to take this front piece of the hood and move it up so that it's tabs into the back of the um, back here, I guess. And then there's this little tab right here on the roof that will go into the slot right here. And you take these uh, siren pieces and split in half. Probably, in, there we go. There, split them in half like that. It's easy to forget that part. You can see it's also really starting to come together a whole lot. See so coming together and also adjust these bumper pieces just so they're angled and everything. Want to adjust that. We're almost done. Lower half now. Split the legs of heart. And then take the hips, move them out, and then on that joint, move them down. Move it out. Like that. Take these pieces, the the rear bumper, move them up. Rotate this way. Collapse them in, and then fold this part down. Same thing, move it up, rotate it, collapse it fully into the slot, and then fold that in, take the feet, move them down, like so. Move the spiky bits out, like this. Make minor adjustments as necessary because some pieces are probably gonna go all whack while you're doing this. And you have barricades 
robot mode. And yeah, bit robot mode here. It's actually really nice, I think. And um, hopefully coming across pretty well on the... And here, because, well, thing is black and white background, something's going to get washed out. But um, yeah, it, it's actually a pretty nice robot mode. Uh, like I said, the transformation is pretty simple for a masterpiece figure. I do like it quite a bit here in this uh, mode. It's uh, really reminiscent of the movie. Uh, it's, I think it's really well done, I think. I just really like this guy. Uh, this is one of the few, again, this is one of the few Decepticons from the movies I like. They make a masterpiece uh, Black Owl, oh, man. Masterpiece movie Black Owl go insane because, oh man, I just really like the Black Owl design. But yeah, it just, it looks really good. He's kind of got his weird gangly arms, which well fits. Um, wide stance, all that stuff. His head, crazy head, um, a lot of the details. Only thing is these arms are kind of a little weird just because you can see that it's just mostly, I guess, window stuff. And they're also kind of thin looking, but that's how they're supposed to be. It's kind of weird looking, but eh, I don't mind it too much. Uh, again, back here, it's not too bad. The little peg here, I believe that is Tomashi stage compatible. I will double check that real quick. I can grab one of these real quick and double check that. Yes, that is absolutely for Tomashi stages. Good. So if you want that, it's there. But yeah, he just looks really good. Um, I really like how he looks here. So there's that. Uh, yeah, uh, he's also got little features here. Um, his mouth can open really wide if you want to. Sure, you can see that again, but you can see the mouth can open and close. It's easier to do if I angle it. As, but yeah, his mouth can open all the stuff. That's, I guess, the point of articulation of sorts. His head is on a ball joint, so it can look left and right, up and down. There's a little bit of, there's this little hinge here. So it can kind of move forward and back if you need it to. He can twiddle his uh, windows as you want. Shoulders on ratchets. Thing is, the only thing is they don't really lock in right here. So it's really easy to accidentally move them in a way you don't want to. Which is unfortunate. Uh, they also have this joint. You can move outward on a ratchet. These little things can move, although they can't move outward. They can only move inward, which isn't really helpful. But yeah, they can move forward and back as well. Yeah, when they're, you know, cooperating and not getting stuck. But uh, it's also elbow here, bicep, his hands. His hands can open and close on separate joints. The fingers can move down, the thumb can move. They can grab stuff, although he can't really hold any five millimeter weapons just because of his nature. He has a waist swivel, but because of his, his uh, design, it's kind of limited as it is here. You can see that it's, you can see it's wiggling, but it's not really going anywhere. That's because of this stuff back here. If you move the hips forward, then you get a lot more range. You see that? If you move the hips forward, you get a lot more range. But it's kind of, it does fully, it does do a full 360 spin, but just because of the backpack, it can't actually do it during robot mode. Unless you do some shenanigans. This is these little things, which can uh, move in and out. Uh, yeah, but he's got outward hips. You move forward and back. You saw he's got a thigh swivel, although it breaks the sculpt really bad, but eh, posability and stuff. He's got ratcheting knees. They don't go very far, because again, because of the sculpt. Although I believe, well, I thought that was a, no, okay, there's two, there's two ratchet there. I thought so, that was just, this top one's just really tight. So he does have actually quite a bit of knee movement. He's got a, this thing can get in the way again, this bump back bumper thing. But he does have ratchet, two, two ratchets in the knees. His he heel, their feet, wow. His feet can move forward and back a bit, mostly forward, but they also have quite a bit of ankle tilt. And you also have this spike, you can adjust that how you want. So yeah, pretty good posability there. Use you please there. And uh, just for comparison's sake, here he is with uh, the MPM Bumblebee. They're about the same height, which they should be. They can fight, so you can have them fighting each other on your shelf if you want. So, yeah, that's good. And in car mode, they're also in the same height. I didn't really want to transform B, so didn't compare them in car mode, but they're about the same size in car mode as well. 
Uh, but he does have this weapon right here. I didn't show it off yet, but yeah, this weapon thing. It actually comes with his own little stand, which is pretty neat. Uh, it's a little stand because there's nowhere for just storing rope, um, car mode, so just, you gotta stand. But yeah, it, this stand, which, you know, you, you wanna take one of these spiky things, which are all rubbery plastic. You wanna take these spiky things, insert it in, and there you go. It stands, so you can just have it displayed if you don't want him holding it, which you might not, because you have to, to attach this thing, they'll remove, remove the stand, and then you have to transform one of the arms, specifically the left arm, but um, what you wanna do, is undo that part you want to undo this take this you pretty much are mostly tra untransforming it so you want to take the rear window close it up um move the hand back and everything untransform that move the wheel untab it move it back you're basically taking it back to car mode more or less and then you can take this thing this tab right here, this little tab right there where I'm pointing, and that goes in the slot from before. And there you go, he's got his uh, crazy thing. There you go, his crazy weapon. Which does spin. If you can actually get it to Hold in properly. Yeah, it does spin though. See? That's kind of neat. The only thing is that this uh, connection is a little tenuous, but yeah, you have to untransform it so it's weird. So it's implied it's supposed to be like this this wheel here. It's supposed to be like this wheel, but like, yeah, it kind of has to cheat a bit, unfortunately. I wish there was like a way to like, um, make it to this wheel instead, you pop this wheel off and you attach this instead. I think that would have been a better option, but eh, I'm not an engineer, so I'm not a toy engineer, so I don't know what I'm talking about really. Might not have been possible or might have been just more cost prohibitive than really worth is really worth. Come on. Yeah, that's the only thing is, that's my biggest other thing is just, it's technically easy, it's just sometimes it fights you when you're trying to transform it in some way or another. There we go. There, but yeah, um, I, again, I really enjoy this uh, masterpiece figure. I think it looks good that again, you got the like more blues and stuff showing up in this remote. You see a lot of little blue highlights throughout the, particularly in the legs and the arms, which really, really look really nice. They're nice metallic blue. I don't see any real paint. I didn't have any real paint problems in mine. Mine has like they have perfect paint. Um, there's a couple little things like sometimes these windows will come out of the, like they'll accident, accidentally, you'll can, it's easy to knock them loose or something like that. See, so it's just, if it's uh, arms fold enough, they'll just kind of come undone and they kind of get caught on stuff. Uh, some parts get caught on other parts when you're transforming. That's annoying. And these parts can be a little looser. The arms, because of the jointing, they don't want to stay in one spot really when you're trying to rotate this one in particular, this one's really bad about it. Yeah, so this is just a couple little weird things. Um, also, his waist is almost useless in the if you have him standing normally. If you have him standing normally, the waist is almost useless, which is unfortunate. You have to bend him out first, and then his waist can start moving. So I guess you can, if you really want to go crazy with the chicken leg stance, you can get some more waist tilt, um, waist turning, but it's kind of annoying. But Otherwise, though, yeah, I think I, I like it a lot. Uh, you can get the Hasbro version for $80 from Amazon. That's supposed to be an Amazon exclusive, but a lot of stores are carrying it for absurd prices. You can also get it on um, the Japanese version. The Takara Tomy version is still available. Widely available, actually. Um, as of right now, if you don't go through eBay... If you don't go... Yeah, I bought mine on eBay from a Chinese seller. This is technically the um, Hasbro Asia version, which isn't how different. just has a little sticker on the back telling me it's saying it's made to be sold in Hong Kong. I got mine for less than about 60 bucks because of a coupon and everything. I got a coupon and everything, so I got it for about 60 bucks. Uh, worth it for that price for sure. Uh, I saw on eBay, though, for roughly usually in the range of $70 to $75 with free shipping. Amazon selling them for $80 retail plus shipping. And if you go to like HLJ or, or actually Amazon Japan, they have still have a bunch of them. They're sh shipping them. Price with shipping is they'll actually cost less. It'll cost you about $70, $75 if you ship it from Japan. 
So the domestic version from Amazon is actually most expensive um, normal thing. You can also buy from like the typical places like TF Source or BBTS, but they're selling for like, I don't know if it's actually not BBTS, but like TF Source is selling for like $100. Don't go there. I would actually recommend if you can, I would actually go with Amazon Japan. That's probably your best bet if you want reliability because, well, eBay sellers can be a little uh, shady sometimes. I got lucky with mine just because coupon and everything. So I got mine for about 60 bucks. That's a good price. I think 80 is actually a good price. Anything beyond that, you're starting to push it. But yeah, for about $80, $80 or less, and you're interested in the movie stuff, totally get this guy. Uh, he goes well, especially if you have Bumblebee already. He goes well with him. Um, he's just a good, well, menacing looking robot. I just really like it a lot. I think he really looks good. Um, his backpack compresses down real nice. For the most part, uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of kibble. Uh, he moves mostly well, just this waist joint kind of stinks. But yeah, I, I think he looks really good. I just really like him a lot. So uh, that's it. I rambled a bit. I hope I got through this without screwing up too bad because it's been a month. And hopefully within the next month or so, you should see... Actually, yeah, with, for sure there'll be more reviews because stuff's finally coming out that I'm buying. Finally. So uh, I'll see you next time. Uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe. And uh, I hope to see you next re next video review. 